Welcome to Talking Villanova Football with head coach Mark Ferrante. I'm Steve Pannone. We're coming to you live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. We, uh, coach, we uh, head up to uh, New England there. It was actually nice weather and all for a tale of two halves, really. You know, the New Hampshire Wildcats come away with a 28-20 victory. You guys had a 20-7 to lead at the half. I guess let's start with the good. Let's start with the first half. Yeah, and unfortunately you said it was a nice weather day, so I can't blame the November <laughs> New England weather up there. Uh, it was an awesome day to play football, I'll be honest with you. Um, the, the half started out where uh, we kicked to them, and – they went 80 yards in their opening drive, converted three third downs. They were their only third down conversions they made in the whole right. first half. So, and I've said this on shows before and on interviews before, no matter how well you practice and how well your scout teams can run the opposing offense, defense, and special teams as far as giving a look, they never run it as well as the opponent runs it because it's their system and they're, you know, playing with their guys. So it took our defense that first possession – to get used to, you know, how they're running their system at their speed. So they went 80 yards and scored a touchdown in the opening drive. Then after that, they only had 70 yards of offense in the remaining portion of the half. So opening drive went 80. They only had 70 the rest of the half. Um, we held them the seven yards rushing in the first half, so we stopped their running attack pretty well in the first half. And uh, like I said, we only gave up those seven four points. Offensively, uh, we were making some plays. Now – we had some real good field position on some of them. We had a blocked punt yep. that gave us the ball at the New Hampshire 39-yard line, so that set up one of the scores. Um, we did have a really nice 80-yard drive of our own to uh, set up one of the other scores, and we were making plays and you know doing a good job on defense, doing a good job obviously with the blocked punt on special teams, and um, you know offense. Danny and everybody was able to put the ball in the air. We were making the catches and making the plays that were there for us to make when we had the opportunities in the first half. The the number of plays that each team ran were even, but we had closer to 250 yards to their 150 yards, and hence the lead, 20-7 yep. to seven at halftime. And then the, you had, there was two interceptions in there, one by each team. You guys had the ball down in the red zone. You throw a late interception, but you get one back as they're trying to drive late in the half that uh, – you pick up one to get it back. So kind of the turnovers kind of washed themselves in the first half, not so much in the second half. Yeah, the first half, the, the end of the first half was really interesting because we were in scoring position again. And on first down, we threw a pass into the end zone that looked like it could have been caught, but they called it incomplete. And so – What did you, you know, see on the film when you watched it? It's hard to tell. You know, you don't get the greatest of angles and – um Here's how it works. So we're we're not in the NFL. We don't have the red hanky <laughs> to throw out a challenge flag on replays, right? And they review every single play. And we have to have a minimum of four camera angles at our level. Now, when you're in the FBS, sometimes they have 18 to 20 camera angles, you know, the ones that are on ABC and NBC yep. and all the big-time games, and especially when they get into playoff time. So we have minimally four angles. And here's the thing, though. The replay guy in the booth watches every single play. And before each game, the referee comes up to me and says, you know, obviously we all know we have replay now because our conference has replay. And, and what they say is we look at every play. We, if we feel we need to stop the game, we'll stop the game. You're allowed to challenge, but if you challenge and you get it wrong, you're going to lose a timeout. And so they're talking to you during the course of the game because they want to help you out and save your timeout. Sure. So when we ran that first down play, we actually had Jaron Hayek in the left uh, part of the end zone. Um, he's the referee who saw it the best signaled incomplete. So our coaches are saying, challenge, challenge, challenge. So I walk over to the referee. He calls me over. He's on the – they have headsets during the course of the game. So he's talking about the play, and they're reviewing it. They actually reset the 25-second clock because the clock was running and it was winding down, and then they reset it back to 25 so they could further review it without stopping the game completely and taking the, you know, two minutes or whatever it takes to stop the game. So the guy, I'm standing right next to one of the officials on the sideline, and he goes, they looked at it, it's going to stand, meaning they're not going to overturn it, and they're not going to stop the game to look at it because they saw enough where they're going to yeah. continue to I, call I, ha it I happen to be up in the press box and got to look at a replay 
and they weren't going to change it. If they called it a touchdown, they weren't going to change it either. Correct. But once they called it incomplete, there's there wasn't enough good looks at it. Now, Jaron's trying to sell it, which I understand right. every player is right. going to do. And you think, oh, I caught it, I caught it. You just couldn't get a good enough look to see, from my angle, watching it up in the press box, to see if he you know, got his hands under the ball. But I agree with right. probably with the officials told you they weren't going to change that call either way it went. And we had two timeouts at the time, and we were already in field goal range, so I didn't want to lose a timeout unnecessarily. And the guy said, it's going to stand, keep your timeout. And I said, good, I'll keep the timeout. Unfortunately, we didn't have a field goal opportunity. We didn't have another touchdown opportunity. We threw the interception to the end zone. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, we're in scoring position. All four of our turnovers, three in the second yeah. half, and then the one in the first half, all four of them were inside their 30-yard line. So we were in scoring position on all of them, and, uh, you know, we just gave up the ball and made those decisions, uh, made those bad plays at, at the most inopportune time. And then we get to the half. You guys go into the half 20-7. to seven. And then it seems like the last two weeks, and, and it feels like a momentum as a fan. I'm watching as a fan up in the press box. But you guys are receiving the open half kicker. You win the toss. You defer. You get in the ball. And then once again, you had the fumble against Stony Brook. This time you get a quick three and out, and it gives the other team a lot of momentum. Yeah, and they went down and made plays and did their job and then scored that touchdown on their first possession. And now, as you said, it's a momentum swing. You know, And, and this one was different than Stony Brook. Stony Brook, we gave away possessions. Yes, this is a three and out, but we didn't – you know, just give it right back yeah. to them. You know, uh, we, we had some drives going, and then we just turned the ball over later in the drive. So when you – I mean, we had over 400 yards of offense. You know, we just turned the ball over in scoring position. And uh, defensively, when you watch the film, you know, because you never see it all during the course of the game. You have to go review the film. You have to go analyze the film. You know, you see the all-22 copy, the wide, the tight, all the stuff that the coaches get to look at and so on. And it's a whole different look of what you're seeing on the film that we're looking at than a TV copy. Sure. You know, you have a lot different angles and so on. So, you know, when we go back and look at it, there was really times, like I just said about the first half with our defense, there was times we were playing really good. It's just that the times we didn't maybe hit the right gap or the times we didn't, uh, you know, maybe roll the right way or something is when they struck and had the, they had a 31-yard run, a 31-yard pass, and a 21-yard pass for their touchdowns. So even though we played the majority of the game pretty well, you made a couple mistakes here and there, and they were costly. It wasn't a 10-yard gain. It was a 31-yard touchdown. And, uh, you know, same thing with, as I said, about the offense. It wasn't a, uh, you know, turnover and, you know, whatever, or a missed block, and then they get the ball where you, you can punt it away. It was a turnover in scoring opportunities. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's always costly. So we got to find a way to play a little more consistently, obviously, and we got to find a way to protect the football because in the last three games. Yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of been the constant in the three last three games that haven't gone our way has been we've turned the football over. Yeah, in the last three games were minus seven. In the first six games, we're plus four yeah. in turnover ratio. So, you know, now we're sitting at overall at a minus three. And, you know, that's always the biggest thing. But there's really three stats, you know, as far as total yards and all the things, how many yards you give up on defense, how many yards you gain on offense. There's three stats that matter. How many points do you score? How many points do you give up? And turnovers. And the turnovers probably are a direct reflection of what those other two are going to be. Yeah. You know. uh, all right, Coach, we're, we're going to move on with more uh, a brighter subject, we'll call it, or a happier subject. We've got the Richmond Spiders coming in this week, and we've got some festivities around that. And we also have a national championship quarterback that's going to join us, Chris Whitney, St. Joe's Prep, local product, is going to come on after this quick break. So we'll be right back with Coach and Chris after this. We're live from the Inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Rander. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. Back with more talking Villanova football after this on 610 ESPN.
Ponte. We're live from the Inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. And, Coach, we're joined by one of my favorite players. I didn't even tell Chris that before he came on. You're, you're quarterback from 2007 to 2010. And one of the many reasons we wanted to have Chris on today is we're, we're going to be celebrating the 10-year reunion of that national championship team, which Chris quarterback. Uh, and, Chris, thanks for joining us, I guess. Thank you. Uh, as we were talking, just some of your favorite memories of that year. And, and as guys get out of football or even any sport, you always talk about it's the camaraderie you miss, some of the guys. Uh, talk about a few of those special moments you guys had during that championship run. Yeah, definitely. We uh, That group of guys was a special group of guys. Um, it was kind of whatever whatever it took to win the game. We, we kind of continued that throughout the entire season. Um, but some of the moments, Temple, I mean, to start off, it's always great starting off the season with a win, and that was a huge win. Um, kind of catapulted us into the season. Um, we had a little bit of a hiccup with New Hampshire that year, um, and I then know the uh, <laughs> that was your that was your only hiccup. <laughs> it was yeah, and then we uh, came back and had a um, a nice game down at Richmond. Um, I think it was four, we were just talking about this. It was fourth and ten, fourth and eleven. Uh, we were down uh, through a pass across the middle, and Harvey had a one-handed catch that kind of catapulted us into uh, the playoffs and kind of led us on a good run. And then we got a shot back at New Hampshire. Yep. That was our game that we had. Uh, we got a rematch with them down at our place, snow game. Yep. I remember, remember that, that one well. crazy weather? Yep, yep. It was a snow game, and, uh, you know, we got redemption on them a little bit for that particular a little bit. year. Yeah. That was good. And, uh, you know, we're uh, ranked – high enough to be home a lot of those games so we had the home field advantage in a lot of the games and that was great how about the uh the game after that um talking with some folks uh even tonight and then in the past when we played william mary another league team we had to go new hampshire we, we went holy cross first then new hampshire then william and mary that's yeah. a national semifinal to go yep. on to right chattanooga right and um that had to be the coldest game probably the coldest game i've ever played in, in my agree. life it was it was freezing, um, and it's always tough playing a team twice in right. the season after you beat them. Um, but, again, it wasn't the prettiest game, um, but it came down to kind of the personality of that team, which was whatever it took, we, we did it. Um, going for it on that fake punt, seize. Right. Um, fourth, it was, again, like third and 15, and Harv caught a, um, a smash route uh, against the sidelines and then um, ended up scoring and, and kind of – Took us into the the championship game, and even the, even the championship game, we were pretty big un underdogs. I, I, I yeah, I heard Montana. Um, yep. Montana was the big the big team coming in, um, and we put up three hundred and some. You know the stat better than me. <laughs> yeah, you won't uh, forget that one. Yeah, no, we had almost as much rushing yards as they had passing yards. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so that was a big game, and the other play, the, the other big play in the um, William Mary game was the Wildcat where Caesar ran the trap yep. for 60 yards. Yep. They, yep. they blitzed us, and so we checked to the certain play, and Caesar went about 60 yards to secure that win. But William Mary, I don't want to take anything away from Montana, obviously, because they're a great program, and they had a great – they were doing a great job back then as well, and they still are. But um, William Mary might have been the toughest opponent. I think all – I mean, Temple was tough. Right. Yeah, I agree. William Mary was probably the toughest, toughest team we played – all year. And, Coach, some of my memories of Chris as a player was he was the guy that always felt like it's third and five, he gets you six yards. Right. It's, you know, it's whatever down and distance. He was just – he's a winner. And, then, and you, I can read all the stats off to prove it. But um, – and this isn't sometimes fair, but maybe his arm strength wasn't as great as some of the guys in, that he played against in the CAA. But when you needed a play to happen – or you needed a big moment, and uh, he would make that happen. And that's the way I remember as a fan. How was he to coach in terms of when you had your unit? I'm sure they liked playing in front of this guy. No doubt. It's the same way. So Chris developed into be, being a good passer because he, he wasn't the best of passing quarterbacks early on as his, in his career, but he developed into that. Putting it and, nicely. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm carefully choosing my words. But he, but. The mentality, and as Chris just said, the whole team had that do whatever it takes mentality that, to that find a way. That's comes from him. the quarterback. That's yeah. him, right? <laughs> he, it came from him and, and others, but the quarterback is that focal guy, and he's the leader in the huddle. And back then, you know, we did huddle some, and where you, you don't huddle as much today. So I think sometimes you lose a little bit of that leadership and, and camaraderie within a unit without huddling. And I know some other coaches have talked about that before, but. 
getting back to Chris, he would miss a read and make a play. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So, okay, why don't you hand that off to the back? Okay, it's first down. So let's move on. And and that was just his mentality, and that's contagious when you have that. And, you know, very confident, very sure of himself, and uh, just found a way to get things done. And, and the whole team kind of was the same way, and it worked out, and obviously we won a championship. So we're, we are real excited, you know, as a coach that was on that staff with Coach Talley, and I was one of the assistants, and I, I know some of our other assistants are coming back. Uh, Friday night we're going to have a little gathering for all the 09 guys that are coming back. I think – Talking with Dean today, he said there was yeah, about yeah. 28 or 30. Yep, yep. Of good, a good amount of people uh, coming back. going to be a lot of fun. It'll be good. And then they're going to get recognized at the game. So it's going to be a great celebration. And, you know, from uh, my perspective uh, as now the head coach, I'm real excited to have that 09 karma within our <laughs> stadium. I might even have them come in the locker room. I won't get away with being able to suit any of them up. <laughs> but at least if they're in there and they're around our guys, you know, that, that's a good vibe to have, so I'm excited to do that. Well, Chris, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what you've been doing post-football here and being still a local product from St. Joe's Prep and still being in the Philadelphia area. So we'll take a quick break here. We're live from the Inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. Back with more talk in Villanova football after this. We are live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time, and we are joined by Chris Whitney, the quarterback of the Wildcats from 2007 to 2010. Coach, I'm going to take a quick couple seconds just to go over some of the accolades from this young, fine young man. Quarterback of the – obviously, we talked about the 2009 championship team. His first team all CAA in 2009, second team in 2010. Two-time CAA all-academic team member. Ranks sixth in Villanova's all-time passing yards. You say you had to develop that. That's pretty good. Yep. Ranks 11th in the all-time in rushing, which I remember him for. And then ran for 987 yards, almost a thousand-yard rusher from the quarterback position in 2009. And ranks fifth all-time in career total offense list with 8,401 yards. So there's some pretty good stats. Good there. numbers. Yeah, those are good numbers. And Chris, so obviously, we just ran over your football accolades. What have you been doing since you finished up playing at Villanova? What are you doing with that Villanova degree you earned? Yeah, so I have an insurance brokerage at, in the area called uh, Villanova Insurance Partners, continuing the Villanova name. Um, we do uh, consulting for companies for employee benefits, uh, insurance, and property and casualty insurance. So when I was recruiting Chris, and you talk about his academic uh, All-American as well, um, 
he was being recruited at the same time by Harvard, and he got into Harvard. So we we're real fortunate that he decided to choose Villanova, uh, you know, over such a prestigious school as Harvard. So we we're real happy that he came. And uh, I think since the Ivy League doesn't go to the playoffs, and you can answer this better than I can, but I think the competitive person that he is may have had something to do with that because, you know, if you go to Harvard, Yale, or anybody in the Ivy League, you're not going to have a chance to compete for that national championship. What, yeah, was, your, was, a, what was, was your thinking behind? That was a huge part. And when I looked at that, um, Villanova probably was the, the was the best combination of academic and, and sports. Business school always being ranked in the top 25. Um, it was just a combination of both. And you, you hit the nail on the head. I, I wanted to compete. And uh, knowing that you play 11 games and then the season's over, really didn't do it for me. Um, so it was a perfect, perfect uh, situation. And if we didn't have some of the injury we had in 2010, because we had a lot of these yeah, guys back when we wa- when we won it, um, you know Chris and Whitney and you know um, C's, who's Caesar, Caesar and I said Chris and Whitney yeah. and <laughs> Caesar and Isolan and all they yeah. were all juniors, so they were all back. So we we had a feeling as a coaching staff that 07 into 08 we felt we were going to be pretty good with these guys coming up through the ranks, and then 09 we had a, a heavy junior group of guys and you know we thought maybe 2010 we could really compete for that national championship and it happened really a year earlier than we anticipated so to have all these guys back if we didn't have to go on the road as much as we did or turn the ball over six times or turn the ball over six times when we did go out to eastern washington that has something to do with it you know remember Uh, it well yeah so uh but you know we ended up seven and four but they gave us the at-large bid because probably because we won it the year before and they gave us the opportunity to get back in there and hopefully uh, you know try to defend the title and we went to Stephen F. Austin first yep. then we had to go to Appalachia State then we had to go out to Eastern Washington so a lot of frequent flyer a lot of miles <laughs> a lot of miles and uh, you know we, we turned the ball over too much we lost by 10 at Eastern Washington out there on the red turf yep and um, turn it over six times. Yeah. You turn it over six times, you should lose by more than ten points. Yeah, Chris, we, we talked a little bit about the towards the end of your career in terms of, that, of the 2009 and 10 season. Uh, tell me if I got this right. I think the first time you got it, if it was down at Franklin Field, you're playing Penn, and I think you went in for it. Was it Antoine Young at the time was the quarterback? And is that, is that the first game you played, or am yeah. I wrong on that? That was, the, that was my sophomore year. Okay. Freshman year, I came in when Antoine got hurt, uh, played five games uh, when he tore his ACL, and then uh, – I was supposed to redshirt, um, ended up coming in in the fourth quarter uh, against Penn. and then That's the, the game I remember you pulling that yep. game out. That was your sophomore year. I had yep. it, I was off by a year. But, but Coach, what do you remember as a young player you coming in and being part of the offensive staff and, and, and just what he br- brought to an offense? Well, you could tell right away, and, and we already touched base on it, you can tell his competitive nature. Um, he physical, physically, he has size. He could run. You know, one thing that I know Chris is proud of, uh, he played in a summer all-star game his senior year in high school and played defensive back as, as, as opposed to quarterback in an all-star game down in Florida. And I remember we talked about that. And one year, I believe, in, in, at St. Joe's Prep, I think playing limited capacity at safety um, had eight interceptions wow. in one season. So he's a good athlete with great competitive nature, and he, and he has good size. And, um, you know, I just remember, and like I said, early on, in, in Chris's career, he'd probably because he's he liked running. You know, you, you mentioned he almost had a thousand yard rushing in that one year. He liked running, so I think Chris was the type of quarterback that okay, it's a pass play, first read's not open, I'm I'm gone, yeah. I'm gonna go. So he had to develop the you know, hey, let the play develop, let's get to the first read's not there, maybe look at the next one, maybe do a check down throw, but he wants the ball in his hands, and he wants to run and make the plays and obviously did a great job doing that, whether it was run or pass. And, you know, real excited that Chris was uh, the competitor that he was because it rubbed off on everybody. Chris, obviously you stayed local. You're working in the Philadelphia area, as you mentioned. You get to a lot of the home games and support the program. Who have you been able to stay in touch with? Ten years out, time flies. So I can't believe it's already ten years. Time goes so quick. Yeah. But mention some of the guys you're still able to keep in touch with. Yeah, it's funny. Those guys, you kind of pick up where you left off. And I was just with them this past weekend at uh, Joe Macoid's wedding. Uh, the weekend before, I saw a bunch of them um, at uh, homecoming. Uh, but yeah, I still uh, still keep in touch with C's Demps. Uh, I was at Marlon Calby's wedding um, this past summer. Uh, old roommate Jimmy Nelson. So still try to keep in touch. Um, 
it's obviously tougher. Uh, we're all getting older. We, some of Starting us have families. kids, <laughs> families, <laughs> distance. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those things. Uh, as soon as we see each other, it's it's back to normal um, right away. And Chris is very active in our football club yep. with Joe McCoy Sr. And he's always in the back lot there with all the tailgates at the home games when Chris does have an opportunity to make it, which he makes most of them, and, and so on. So, and uh, I heard the wedding was awesome. Good time. How many guys were back? Would you say? Would you guess? Uh, seven of them in the wedding, and probably another three, probably close to twelve to fifteen. Wow, that's I awesome. guess. That's a close group. That's yeah. a close group right there. Well, Chris, we appreciate you taking some time and, and, uh, and joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you Saturday and, and, and really enjoy the moment. You guys really earned it. It's a special 10-year celebration for you and your teammates, and we look forward to seeing you out on the field Saturday. So we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back with more Talking Villanova football after this on 610 ESPN. We're live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. Mark Ferrante. We're live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. And, Coach, I guess if you're coming off a tough loss, you look for a little divine intervention. They will pull out all the stops. <laughs> man, we're, we're joined by Senior Associate Athletic Director, Father Rob Hagan, who probably doesn't need any introduction in this town. But, uh, Father, we appreciate you taking some time to join uh, us. It's my pleasure, really. And we just talked to Chris, and he mentioned Joey McCoy just got married this past weekend. And, of course, Father Rob officiated that wedding so i uh, heard it was pretty awesome it's and chris just mentioned a lot of guys came back and you had to do that friday night friday night in philly <laughs> and then uh got to the airport and jumped on a 9 30 flight to new hampshire and caught up with you guys when do you get <coughs> sleep? mass uh, saturday morning with the team when do you get any rest i love it and now you're on a radio show it. on monday you know, <laughs> you know. So, with the, no rest for the weary but uh father rob it's it's the 10th anniversary of the 09 championship and that was the same year that we started the uh, Tap the Rock. Yeah. So I know a lot of people out there who have been close to the program kind of know the story behind it. But for some of the listeners and maybe some of those that don't, mm -hmm. why don't you share that with everyone again? And uh, like I said, that was the year it started, and it's something that we definitely carry with us since then. Well, you know, I'm happy to. I mean, those guys, and, and we did see a lot of them last weekend. And um, you can see why we were successful. Because now, ten years later, they're 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 still successful. You know, we, we, Chris's wedding years ago, and now as a father, and and um, 
just the kind of people that they are. I, you're not surprised that that's the kind of the, the makeup of the locker room of that team and a lot of teams that we've had over the years. But, you know, we, to, we talk, we look for m motivation, we look right. for inspiration, and, they're, and um, you know, Coach Wright and a lot of our teams have um, uh, kind of drawn from the uh, parable, the stone cutter. You know, back in the day, you know, thousands of years ago, before there was power tools and jackhammers, and and uh, you know, the, the the guy had to go out, and his job was to break the rock, and all he had was uh, his hammer and uh, you know his, his brothers. And um, you go out, and you 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 tap on the rock, and you tap on the rock, and you tap on the rock, and it doesn't break. And you wake up the next morning, and you tap some more on the rock, tap on the rock, tap on the rock, and day after day, night after night morning after morning you wake up and you keep tapping on the rock and one day it breaks and it wasn't the last tap on the rock that caused it to break but all the thousands that went before right. you know when the alarm clock goes off you know the practices the cold tubs the ice bags the finals the bus trips where you just you know it's it's a metaphor for perseverance it's a metaphor for keep the faith it's a metaphor for never give up. And that really is um, the heart and soul, the, the spirit of the mission of Villanova. And so, you know, I, I, uh, you know you're always looking for inspiration as a preacher. Right. And we did use that uh, when we were on the road during that season. Mm -hmm. And you never know what's going to resonate with a team or with a group. And I remember uh, you and, and some other coaches coming to my office, you know, that Monday. We need a rock. <laughs> We need this. We need a rock, right? <laughs> and um, so we we found a rock, and uh, and 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 that rock has some significance to to the university. And uh, next thing you know, it it st it wound up in the equipment truck, and it wound up in the, uh, during the away games, and it wound up in the dining room, and now it's in the locker room. And here we are, ten years later, still tapping the rock. Right. And I, I think it's great that you bring it up, because this is a kind of a tap the rock season. Right now, you yes, know? sir. And, um, and, and, and what I love about this is, you know, uh, it's one of the reasons why I take great joy in working with you all is, is this has a lot less to do with scoring touchdowns and winning games and a lot more to do with never giving up, persevering, keeping the faith, you know, whether it, whether it happens to be in a football game or in a job or in a marriage or, or some or unforeseen circumstance that we all face in our life. When you stick together with your brothers, and and you keep tapping that rock, good things happen. And I know I know that that is the spirit of the group that you have now. Right. You can feel it. Right. You really can feel it. And I know they're in there still tapping. Yeah, they are. Our guys, uh, we definitely haven't given up. We definitely are continuing the grind and so on. And we have that metaphor in our locker room. You know, the parable is there's one whole wall where it's all written out, just what Father Rob was just saying. And then that rock, as Father Rob says, it's it, now it's losing some of its shape because, I mean, yeah. over we, 10 it, years' time. It's taken a lot of hits. Over 10 <laughs> years' time, you know, because our guys tap the rock, you know, physically because we have that visual rock now uh, in and out when every time they walk into our locker room. It sits right there in our main hallway. And uh, it used to be nice and straight across the top. Now it's got a little thin <laughs> in it, you know, just from all the taps. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's definitely – uh, something that resonated with everyone. Father Rob shared that at one of our away games, uh, and then we did go and talk to Father Rob about we, we need the visual. And then I remember the first time The Rock appeared was actually at a away game at Towson, and you and I talked about it, and we had The Rock, and we didn't say anything yeah, about yeah. it, you know, because yeah. Father Rob used that parable in a previous, uh, you know, service when yeah. we were with the guys. We just put it on the back table, and it just sat there, and that was the first time the guys saw it, and that was the '09 season, and right. and it's been traveling with us ever since. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and Father, they they talk about you know football is a metaphor for life, and coach you've mm -hmm. done coached it for 35 years now, and, and I always I always kind of measure it with, and it's it, it fits with our Augustinian values yeah. of community. You have these 88 guys in a locker room, going through ups and downs. You talk about the, the struggles of Augustine throughout his life, yeah. and and how he ends up, and I guess what the question I'm trying to lead to is. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to hear you uh, preach before football and basketball games. And what I don't say what gives you the inspiration, but wh where do you come up with the theme for each Saturday? Well, you know, I'm fortunate in that I work in the athletics department. So I, I don't just show up on, on Saturday. I, I feel like I kind of live and breathe the environment that you're in, you know, as administrator and, and uh, you know, the struggles that we face, the meetings we go to. You know, I, I see um, – um, um, and Cove and, and uh, 
poor uh, strain and poor, well, yeah. you know, Cove and, the, and our oh, other I mean, ACL. I mean, I mean, oh, okay. yeah, I mean, and Cove walking by my office, right? You know, every day, um, limping uh, post surgery, and and you just you feel kind of the ebb and flow of a season, and and the highs and lows, and and we all know it's it's not just you know um, the highs, and and so uh, I think that that helps me, kind of. Um, you know, identify with what what might be going through. You know, whether it's midterms or finals. You know, and and yeah, we all we, we, I went here, and so you kind of you kind of remember the the the, 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 the the how tough it is to to go to a school like this, and and you throw in an injury or uh, you know some of the some of these young men and women they they really have they have struggles. You know, Chris Whitney. I mean, he, when he came to Villanova, he had already lost his father. Right. And and so these are real life. Um, uh, hurdles that people have to get over and and as you say Steve you know as a community we kind of are called to come together and help each other climb those mountains and walk through those valleys and it is great to have Father Rob right there Father Rob's at Devon Fieldhouse we're in the Tally Center but they're connected yep. you know it's really one big building and one big athletic department you know Father Rob's not over in the chapel he's not across campus in one of the administrative offices in Tolentine or something like that so our guys you know, just as much as a, a player might stop into my office or stop into his positional coach's office or something, our guys will stop in and talk with Father Rob. Our guys will stop in and talk with Allison. Our guys will stop in and talk with Jem and over ne- Janek over yeah, in yeah, academic yeah. support. And we're all right there, and, and that really helps. And then Father Rob has an opportunity to not just come and see us once a week or us see him once a week. He interacts with our people daily, and that just makes for that relationship building, which is what it's all about, and that's what Villanova's all about. We've talked about the community before, and you just mentioned it. So um, it, it's huge. The only thing that I wish we could do, and you can't, because, you know, there's certain things you have to do leading up to game, but we have our uh, mass with Father Rob as a team in Core Hall, nice, small, on-campus chapel, that's real tight, and, I mean, you're, you're leaning on each other. That's how close proximity it is to each other, which is what you want. Um, it's four hours before the game. Sometimes with Father Rob's messages and the inspiration he brings, I'm ready to go to the field. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I you can't I mean? play, and I, I want mean, to. <laughs> I, want, I, want to, I want to go, all right, it's time to play now, but then we got to go eat first, and then we got to go, you know, and we, we, we get to the locker room two hours before, so – I don't know. I just and but Father Rob is in the locker room right before the game as well, so we get another little quick dose of that before we take the field. Father, we're going to bring you back for one more sure. segment if you have time. So we'll take one quick break here. We're live from the end of Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. Back with more talk on Villanova football after this on 610 ESPN. I'm.
live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. We're also joined by Father Rob Hagan, the team chaplain for both the football and men's basketball programs here at Villanova. And Father, I, I, wanna, I, don't, know, I don't know if you're ready for this one. Mm-hmm. I just kind of came to me during the break. Something I want to ask you. I see. I know how you inspired the athletes and myself, and I'm fortunate enough to be there. What do you draw from that, being around these young men, being around students on campus, you know, from all the sports, but specifically the football program, the 88 strong? And uh, I guess we know what you do for us. What do they do for you? Uh, thanks, Steve. That's a, that's a wonderful perspective because I, I say often that I learn as much from them as I hope they're learning from me. And I, I, I just can't – every year, you know, it's somebody – um, it's something different, and you know, to to celebrate this 10-year anniversary with those young men, and to see Chris Whitney and and C's and and the role players and and how everybody comes together, um, it inspires me. As, and you know, football in particular, it, it's such a f- it's such a physical sport. I mean, they really um, they, they really there's injuries, um, there's emotion. Um, it, it's you, you only play once a week, you know. You don't you don't get a chance to really get back at it, so you kind of have to sit with whatever the result was. And um, I think it requires uh, a lot of a lot of faith and endurance. And so th- that really resonates with me when I see how hard they work, um, how much they have to juggle. You know, you were talking about you know Chris got accepted to Harvard. You know, th- this is an IV esque education, uh, IV esque schedule that's uh, demanded of them here and to see the way they have to multitask and manage their time um, and how much is put on them and with uh, with very little free time if you will um, that kind of focus that kind of singular determination uh, inspires me uh, to, to to try to do my best in, in in my field you know and coach you you talk about you know the tap to rock, kind of the we'll call that Father Rob's beginning, so to speak, but not not that it was the beginning, but his impact that he's had on this program. And and you fast forward, you know, ten years forward. I guess football's always been football. You've been doing this for so long, but um, I think we saw. I think I saw it's on social media where you saw Father Rob with his arm on a mean black when a mean probably knew he was in trouble with that knee and he hadn't had an MRI yet. But I guess athletes know, and this is not a good one for me. And and just, I guess, what does that mean to have someone like that in your program and what kind of effect he has on your young men? Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, like like we said a, a second ago, um, he, he's a tremendous support system for our guys. He, he's, uh, at times, an uh, outlet for our guys because sometimes players don't feel comfortable coming and talking with a coach, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe they think um, you'll view them differently or something. So I'm sure some of the meetings that Father Rob has or some of the interactions, I don't want to call them meetings because a lot of time it's just drop-ins that Father Rob has with these guys. Sometimes, uh, um, you know, it's not, I'm not going to call it, it's not confessional. <laughs> I think it, I think it's just an opportunity yeah. for them to go out and talk with someone in a different environment, uh, a safer environment. Not that our environment isn't safe, but I, I'm sure that some of the stories and some of the things that our guys say to Father Rob or for some of the other people that I mentioned yep. that aren't their positional coach or aren't their head coach can, can be different. And sometimes you just need someone to listen to you. And, and Father Rob is a tremendous resource for not just our program, but for – and not just student athletes, I'm sure. I'm sure for the whole campus community. But since he is in our department, uh, he's a great resource and a, and a tremendous friend to all of us and our student athletes and uh it's invaluable as far as i'm concerned yeah. to have a guy like father rob within our program and you know not just the inspiration and the motivation that he brings when he is you know talking with our guys or we are with them in our pregame get together and so on but just as a friend and, and as a guy who we know is there for all of us anytime we need him yeah. and father you mentioned your class of 98 87 graduate yeah and you, you talk about the metamorphosis the change the Ivy League education you're receiving here. Uh, as an Augustinian father, you must take great pride in, in what this university has become uh, athletically, academically, socially, the resources we provide for our, our students and our student athletes. Uh, I guess just talk a little bit about the pride you have in, in your alma mater. We'll call it that. Yeah, I mean, um, just great respect for the work that, um, you know, people like Father Dobbin and now Father Peter have done. 
to uh, not just grow the university in terms of facilities and endowment and quality of faculty and all the many things that we're proud of, but also uh, ensure that the mission is still um, instilled in everything that we do. And you can see it, you know, whether it's in the business school or in, you know, the arts department or certainly in, in the athletics department. And so you rely on leaders like this one here, and Mark, and, um, you know, uh, Coach Wright and, and our other coaches, Mark Jackson, you know, people who really um, buy into the mission of the university so that if we're just talking about, you know, graduate and go out and make big bucks and just win championships without this, um, the essence of what Villanova is, and that is to, you know, serve others and make an impact in, in other people's lives. And, and that's what I love, uh, you know, about this program is that, you know, you don't have to go out and talk about winning a championship. You know, you go out and you, and you say, well, we, what are our values? We're going to work hard. We're going to play for each other. We're going to do our best. We're going to make sure that, you know, everyone feels a part of this and no one's left out of it. When you do those things, which are kind of core values to, to, to Villanova, to the Augustinian charism, then you're also you're gonna you're gonna get some good results too. You just mentioned Father Rob's an '87 grad. Yeah. Um, so campus has changed a little bit yeah. since <laughs> you've been there. So <laughs> what dorm did you live in? Because we didn't have these real fancy apartments <laughs> I that know. we have now. So where did you spend your uh, time well, on campus when you were there? Well, you know it's funny because you know everybody talks about you know why they came to Villanova. You know because it's ranked and they go to the Final Four and it's a top ten business school. I came to Villanova because it was near the trolley. <laughs> and, I could, and I could commute from Delaware County. So I, I actually commuted you for commu two years and worked. Okay. And then I lived with my buddies down uh, down at the Radner house down, the, the, down at the base of the hill. You <laughs> so know? you never lived on campus? I did not. There Although I, I kid Dave Chajeski because when they start making these plans for, you know, the campus uh, control when we start to move through the NCAA tournament and the Final Four – and I'll look over and I'm going to say, well, Dave, you know, I was swinging from that tree in 85. <laughs> right, right, right. I was hanging <laughs> off that light post. You, you know exactly what happens when those things go on. So no better a resource. But That's awesome. <laughs> Father, we really appreciate you taking some time out. And uh, make sure you take enough time to enjoy this weekend, bringing that, that group back. And, really looking forward to it. And that. I'm sure you'll inspire this group as they head out onto the field Saturday to take on Richmond. So we appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us tonight. We'll take a quick break. We're live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. Back with more Talking Villanova Football after this on 610 ESPN. Mark Ferrante. We're live from the inn at Villanova University located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. 
Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite. More taste and only 96 calories. It's Miller time. And, Coach, uh, as, as Father Rob mentioned, you only get to play once a week. Our next game, our next opponent, the Richmond Spiders, will come in here on Saturday. Winners of four of their last five, five and four overall, four and one in the CAA. So this team's really made some strides since the beginning of the season. Yeah, they're playing really well right now. You, you know, we have all their games. Obviously, they have ours. So, um, you know, they're doing a good job. Their quarterback, Mancuso, is, to be honest with you, a similar style player as Whitney. Uh, he's their leading rusher, over 400 yards of offense. He's about 6'4", 215, so he has that physical size and physical presence that Whitney had when he was playing. And, uh, you know, they're a good team. They have the preseason defensive player of the year, and Maurice Jackson is one of their defensive ends, and he's having a nice year. And, and they have big length in the secondary. Their linebackers, I think two of their linebackers are in the top ten as far as total tackles uh, in the CAA. And up front on offense, they're big, and they have some good young running backs. Their their lack of experience is probably in the running back group. They have a couple grad transfer core, uh, excuse me, wide receivers, and so on. So they're playing at a high level right now. And uh, you know we're going to have to go in there and, and play a solid game. And the big thing we need to do and focus on is, like I said earlier, control the football. You know, start taking better care of the football, especially later in the game. And then we need to start getting a few turnovers. We yep. started the season do really well in that category, and we haven't. Uh, created enough turnovers as of late. So if we can create some more turnovers and then have a few less of our own, uh, you know, that's that's what we need to do this weekend. Yeah, just a little bit of a rundown on their schedule. They opened the season with a win over Jacksonville. Then they played, a, uh, obviously, an ACC team in Boston College where got beat. They uh, lose their opener in the league to Elon 42-20, to and then they t took a tough loss at Fordham. But since then, as I mentioned, four out of five, and the four wins are in the CAA. They beat Albany. Maine, uh, Delaware, 35-25 last week, a big 30-10 to win over Stony Brook. Throwing there is a one-point loss to Yale. So, as you mentioned, this team's probably fine in its stride. Um, talk a little bit about them defensively. You mentioned that you know, they have the preseason player of the year. Are they going to come at you blitz-wise? Are they a man team some, or zone? Some, no. They're, they're probably – they don't take a ton of chances. They will blitz, you know, watching film. And it's early in the week, so we're just starting to watch more and more of that, uh, you know, yesterday and today and then getting ready for tomorrow's practice. But, um, you know, I saw a couple corner blitzes on film, and, you know, they'll bring, like everyone does, they'll slant the line one way and bring an outside and inside backer to the same side and those type of things, which a lot of people do. Um, but they, they do have a solid defense. They have, I think in the league, I think they're rated the number one pass defense in, in the conference right now. So, uh, you know, they, they have a good secondary. Their secondary is big. They're listed as a 4-3 defense, but really when you look at them on film, they're, they're almost more of a 4 2 because one of their linebackers is in that 175, 180-pound okay. range. So he's more of a defensive back size guy, but he's listed as an outside linebacker. So uh, there are two inside linebackers are bigger guys, and, uh, you know, they're doing a good job uh, stopping the run. They're doing a good job. I mean, when you look at statistically, our defense is still doing very well against the run. Uh, their defense is doing really well against the pass. Um, you know, offensively, they're they're scoring about what they're giving up on on paper. Uh, we're scoring more in certain games, but you know, it, it's what are you doing that day? You sure. You know, it's it's not who you're playing; it's how you're playing. And I say that to our guys all the time. And I said to our guys yesterday, you know, we had a good film session. Obviously, we want to build off the positives. We want to correct the negatives because you know there was a lot of good positives in that game. We just have to do it more frequently and more consistently. And, and I told them, you know, in this league, top to bottom, look at the three teams that we beat in the league, William Mary, Towson, and Maine. They all won CA games this past weekend against the guys they played against. So you got to be ready to play and line up against whoever it is within this league. And I told our guys the other day, our biggest opponent right now is ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to play more consistently. We have to play with a little more focus. We have to play with a little more discipline. And we have to get our confidence back. And winning takes care of that. <laughs> you know, winning helps with that, obviously. But you got to start uh, early on and you got to sustain it. And we got to play a four quarter game because we haven't done that in a while. And you talk about you, you turn the ball a little bit. You know, D Daniel had such a great start the year. You know, the last couple of weeks has, has turned the ball over. How do you approach that? Is it like. Hey, he's got to be aggressive. He's got to go make throws, or, or is it? Hey, you know, maybe this is not a good time, or uh, look at this coverage here a little bit differently. How do you approach that? Where you're talking about, you know, you need confidence, but then there's also a time to, to maybe be a little bit smarter with the football. You keep 
preparing and you keep practicing and you stay the course. You, you know what I mean? And I, I don't want to get into any sports psychology or anything like that with you, but I remember coaching the offensive line and our center would have a bad snap. Or I remember I would, uh, you know, make my grading sheets and I would say, don't fall step or something like that. And I had a sports psychologist actually look at my grading sheet one time. He said, you got to rephrase that because sometimes when you're saying don't fall step, all he th- remembers is false step. So he continues to false step. How about step with the right foot? And now it's like, okay, now i got to step with the right So, you know, and, and I'm not trying to go. So Coach Talley used to say to me, he's got to get the snap there, a bad snap. No kidding. And he knows that. So I would then, I wouldn't yell at the guy for making a bad snap. I would talk to the guy about, you know, first things first. Focus on the snap first and then your assignment and so on. So I'm not trying to get too crazy with that, but Dan just has to, play his game you know what I mean so quarterbacks at times will throw interceptions I'm not going to harp on the interceptions he's still also responsible for 30 plus touchdowns whether they're throwing or whether they're running and he actually had the receiving touchdown so (laughs) let's focus on the positives and let's continue to build on that and then let's try to repeat it more frequently does that make sense yeah definitely and uh I know coach you got a good football game you're going to do all your best to win this weekend but I do hope you get a few minutes to enjoy some time and we mentioned friday night with those 2009 i mean that's a national championship that's something right. really special and you should feel great pride in being a part of that program at that time and i hope you get an opportunity to spend some time with the guys on friday night yeah i'm gonna stop up there and i'm sure that uh you know we'll have a nice little get together up in o'day lounge on the third floor and then when they all depart to go do whatever it is they're gonna do i'm gonna go home <laughs> and, and then be ready, get, ready good get ready for the game the next day you know and then we'll see them i'm gonna I'm, I'm thinking about bringing those guys in the locker room before the game just to have a presence. They don't need to come in and talk to the team or anything like that, but just have them kind of, you know, come in there and, like I said before, spread that good karma. And <laughs> Father Rob was on tonight, and we t- tapped the rock story. So we so got a lot of things pointing in the right direction. Yeah. Let's make sure it carries into Saturday. We had a, uh, you know, a first-team quarterback, first-team team chaplain, and you guys are going to go out and give a first-rate performance on Saturday. So best of luck Saturday, Coach. Appreciate that it. That wraps up Talking Villanova Football with Head Coach Mark Ferrante. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. Thanks to our host, the Inn at Villanova University. I want to thank uh, Joe Gaines and Ryan Lennox back at the studio. Tune in to 610 ESPN when Villanova takes on Richmond this Saturday. Our game time is 1 p.m. Pre-game show will begin at 1245. Our next Talking Villanova Football will be next Tuesday, November 12th. For Coach Mark Ferranti, this is Steve Pannone. Thanks for listening to 610 ESPN. Live from the 555 building in the city of brotherly love, this is...